Here's another right triangle, and I've given you this angle, 35 degrees, and this side, which is a length of 4. Please pause the video and try to use the methods and techniques we've already discussed to figure out everything you can about this triangle. If you have any trouble, remember to use the same notation that we've been trying to use on the previous problems. I hope you paused the video and gave that a shot. I'll use asterisks to mark the information that we were originally given. Now, um, we know this angle is 90, so we know that the two remaining angles also have to add up to 90. Well, this angle is 35, so this angle must be 90 minus 35. 90 minus 35 is 55. This angle is 55 degrees. Uh, but the convention is to focus on the angle you were originally given. So I'm going to keep the asterisk down here. We're going to keep focusing on this angle, even though theoretically we could use this angle to figure things out. Now let's label that this side, horizontal, is adjacent to the asterisk. This vertical side is opposite to the asterisk. And how do we know this is the hypotenuse? Because it's opposite to the right angle. The hypotenuse is opposite to the right angle. Now, did you notice that this problem is a little different from all the previous problems that I've given to you? Uh, in all the previous problems, I gave you the hypotenuse. But in this problem, I gave you one of the legs. Notice that in this problem, we were not told the hypotenuse. Instead, we were told a leg. Um, so we have to figure things out not based on the hypotenuse here, but on the leg. So which trig functions are going to be useful to us? Well, the only way we can figure things out is if we use the information that we've been given. We have to use the information that we've been given here, this number 4. And this number we've labeled as the opposite side. So the only trig functions that are going to be any use to us are the ones that involve the opposite side. Well, the sine involves the opposite side, so I'll make an asterisk to remind myself that that function is probably going to be useful. Um, and the tangent involves the opposite side, so I'll make an asterisk to remind myself that this function will be useful. But the cosine doesn't refer to the opposite side. Cut, adjacent over hypotenuse, the cosine never refers to the opposite side, so if we tried to use the cosine, we would never have any opportunity to use this number 4. So the cosine is not going to be a very useful uh, function to use in solving this problem, because we want to figure stuff out using this number that we were given. Well, the number that we were given was about the, uh, the side that's opposite to the 35. So we have to use trig functions that have an O that deal with the opposite side. This cosine is not going to be too helpful to us. All right, we can start with either the sine then or the tangent. Uh, I feel like starting with the sine, but you can start with the tangent if you want to. Sine of 35. The asterisk reminds me that I'm focusing on the 35 degree angle. So, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. What's the opposite side? Well, in this case, we know what the opposite side is. The opposite side was 4. And in this case, we don't know the hypotenuse. In all the previous problems, we knew a number for the hypotenuse. But in this problem, we don't know a number for the hypotenuse. So I'll just have to plug in a variable, height, for hypotenuse. Well, this equation looks a little different than what we've seen before, but we still have the same basic goal. The first thing we have to do is get rid of the fractions. Equations are difficult to deal with when we have fractions. Well, we know we can cross-multiply to get rid of fractions. Let's get a fraction on the left-hand side as well, and now we can cross-multiply. Well, one of the diagonal multiplications would be um, sine of 35 times the hypotenuse. Sine of 35 times the hypotenuse. We can use parentheses to show that we're doing the multiplication. And the other multiplication would be 1 times 4. So those are our two diagonal multiplications. Here we have 1 times 4. Obviously, 1 times 4 is just 4. But now what? Well, what are we trying to do? Remember, we're trying to solve for the hypotenuse. We're trying to get the hypotenuse term by itself. Well, it's not by itself yet because we've still got this sine 35 term in here. We've got to detach the sine 35 term from this hypotenuse term. So we're going to need a little bit more basic algebra. Uh, I hope that this algebra is pretty easy for you. Uh, but if it's not, let me give you a reminder. How do we detach numbers from a variable? Well, we have to use the do the opposite trick. Do the opposite. However the number is being attached, we have to do the opposite to detach it. 
How is this sine 35 connected to this hypotenuse term? Hypotenuse term? Well, they're being multiplied. Sine 35 times the hypotenuse. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So the way to get rid of the sine 35 term is to divide by the sine of 35. But the golden rule of algebra is that if you divide one side by the sine of 35, you must divide the other side by the sine of 35. Otherwise, what you're doing is not legal. So since I'm dividing on the left by the sine of 35, I'm obligated to divide on the right by the sine of 35. Now the sines of 35 cancel on the left-hand side. That was the whole reason why it was a good idea to divide by the sine of 35. And we're left with the hypotenuse equals 4 divided by the sine of 35. You can do this in one step on your calculator. You don't have to figure out the sine of 35 first. You can just do 4 divided by sine 35 on a scientific calculator. That comes out to be approximately 7. 4 divided by sine 35 on your scientific calculator is approximately 7. So now we can label that this hypotenuse has a length of 7. This problem is turning out to be a little different from the previous problems. How is it different? Well, remember that all, all the previous problems, I told you the hypotenuse and asked you to figure out the two legs. But on this problem, I told you originally how long one of the legs was. And then you had to figure out the other leg and the hypotenuse. So the algebra here turned out to be a little bit different. Um, and we ended up here with the hypotenuse equals uh, 7. So this is the type of problem where it's a good idea to go back to first principles and actually label all the sides um, and to start by using Sokotoa. Uh, anytime the problem is introducing any issues that are a little bit different or make you a little uncomfortable, it's better to use more notation and write down more of the steps. Uh, all right, so uh, here we figured out what our hypotenuse is.